Hi, my name is Adit Mitra and this is my final IB Visual Arts exhibition for the session of May 2020. My work explores several ideas surrounding the theme of Indian culture and society. Being Indian and growing up there, I drew inspiration from observation and personal experiences. In the theme, I explore various conventions and beliefs such as contrast in ideologies, religious beliefs, inequality, discrimination, political issues, and observations from quotidian life existing in Indian society. My intention was to responsibly represent these aspects to diversity in my artwork. Similar to India as a country, my collection has incorporated diverse and unconventional mediums, from oil and acrylic on canvas, to utilizing soil, branches of trees, and newspapers. Using multiple processes to adapt the medium according to my intention, function, and purpose, my work is driven by exploration and continuous trial and error. To begin with, my first piece titled Ulu is an exploration of acrylic and spray paint on canvas. Ulu explores the evolution of the word Ulu or Owl in Indian society. In Indian mythology, this word Ulu was symbolic of great wealth and wisdom. However, over the years, it has become common to call a foolish person Ulu, the literal translation being an owl. Earlier, a word which had such positive connotations along with it was now used to demean people. Influenced by this idea and influenced by the work of Banksy and its usage of lines and stencils, this was an exploration of printmaking and stencil making. My intentions were to depict the contrast in ideologies in present Indian society compared to the past and the interconnectedness of these two ideologies. To depict the interconnectedness and relationship between these two ideas, I was influenced by the yin and yang. The yin and yang talks about how the seemingly opposite or contrary forces or ideas may be complementary or interconnected. This idea greatly influenced my color scheme and also both my elements. The second piece, titled Shidur Kala, is an exploration of oil on canvas. Rituals have a major importance in Indian society. Shidur Kala, literally meaning vermilion game, is one of them. Shidur, or vermilion, is a patriarchal symbol of marriage and becomes a symbol of power, womanhood, and sisterhood during this ritual. This piece celebrates the universal bonding of women, her strength, and independence. This piece explores the contrast of ideologies and rituals in Indian society pertaining to the liberty granted to women. Women are celebrated in many rituals in Indian society. However, on the contrary, they face inequality, mistreatment, and abuse. To depict this ideology, I wanted to celebrate the ideas of womanhood and motherhood. Shidur Kala, as a ritual, celebrated and symbolized both these ideas. For me, my mother, being my biggest female role model, had to be the representation of the strength of Indian womanhood. For me, she was a symbol of both these ideas. This piece is a portrait of my mother based on an image I had clicked of her during the actual ritual. My next piece, titled Bharupia, was the exploration on oil and canvas. This piece explores the death of the art form known as Bharupia, an impressionist art form once popular and widespread, now is in decline with its artists living in poverty. It was common for them to be dressed up as policemen, priests, gods, and animals, but now the profession is dying at a dangerous rate. My intention was to depict the emotion and the death of this profession, influenced by artist Amarco Boafo and his use of composition and texture to depict emotion and expression. I wanted to explore the theme of melancholy in, in my work. I wanted to depict emotion and expression through composition and texture. I felt oil on canvas would give me a large amount of freedom to depict emotion and expression. My next piece is titled Holy Cow. It's a sculptural exploration with plaster. A representation of the contrasting beliefs about the consumption of cows in Indian society. Considered sacred in a few religions, despite the fact that India is a secular state, after decades of modernization, this idea has remained. This has led to a communal unrest regarding cow slaughter. My intention was to explore the idea of this innocent and strong value of non-violence being twisted into dirty nationalism. 
Inspired by artist Kiki Smith's figurative art, I explored sculpting with plaster of Paris. This process consisted of many trials and errors, and I further tried implementing rich symbolism with the usage of color and composition. This piece depicts the presence of numerous languages in Indian society. Additionally, it depicts the extinction of local languages taking place. 197 languages in India are either vulnerable, endangered, no extinct. Inspired by artist Pascal Martin, I used an installation of tree branches along with leaves made by the newspaper of regional languages to depict the diversity of the languages present and through the fallen leaves to depict the extinction of the several local languages. When I thought of extinction of languages, I thought of the word fall and I associated fall with autumn. Autumn being a season also depicted a passage of time. Hence, I wanted to depict the falling leaves as the falling languages or the languages which are getting extinct. I utilized branches, soil and the pot to represent India and its citizens and the leaves to be the local languages. In Martin's work, he used a tree to depict the changing relationships we have with nature. Similarly, I wanted to depict the changing relationships Indians had with their local languages. And to do so, I utilized a mix of organic and inorganic mediums to depict this change. This piece explores the historical significance of the spread of textiles and motives of India. My intention was to depict the spread of these te textiles at a global scale by comparing or representing India by the brass, brass pot and the pieces of fabric to the mo motives flowing into the global market. Inspired by Indian artist Shivod Gupta's style of using everyday objects of India, I chose to depict India with the brass pot, a quotidian object. My intention was to depict the spread of these textiles through the spread of water. Further influenced by artist Shivod Gupta, I wanted to examine household vessels which were significant in the quotidian Indian life. I wanted to represent the spirituality of the mundaneness of everyday life and find a beauty within it. In the end, I found the brass pot, which was a very significant item in many Indian households. Through the brass pot, I wanted to represent India and the transformations taking place in society. And through the textiles, I wanted to represent the spread of the motives and the textiles which had taken place historically and is significant in a quotidian manner for all Indians in their society. This piece explores the emotions behind the amendment of the special status of Kashmir by the Indian government. My intent was to depict the feeling of captivity and lack of free will the Kashmiris face today. Inspired by photographer Ivani Rai, her imagery and composition drew this piece forward. I used dull, somber tones to create a melancholic and gloomy mood. Further inspired by French artist Sean Cora, I painted the landscape trying to depict the various textures. The morning hour is a series of moments which are accurate to the lifestyle of many Indians. It depicts the spirituality of the fast-paced and quotidian lifestyle full of hard work and finding joy in the small things. Inspired by Raghu Rai, my intention was to find the beauty within this everyday mundaneness by capturing moments and the spirituality of these moments while looking for intriguing compositions in everyday scenes, taking those single moments which represent the emotion of life. Through this process, I investigated the manipulation of shutter speed to manipulate exposure in order to play with the light which is available to me. As I clicked in varying settings with varying amounts of light, this was a very important and educative experience. Over the past two years, during my trips to India, I kept searching for subjects which would best represent India. When I decided to take a step back and look at India through my eyes, I saw myself and the emotions I felt when I thought about the country. I looked at India in the eyes and so I saw myself. I realized to capture emotions, I had to capture people, my favorite subject. Stepping away from everything, I felt that people were the real beauty of my country. Inspired by Raghubi Singh's dynamic compositions, I captured portraits of individuals and streets all across India while capturing unique compositions and exploring with light and shutter speed. 